Hey there, Psych 370 students, and welcome to the first video lecture of the last week of the semester, week 16. The plan for this week is to finish up our coverage of observational learning. Now, your reading assignment for this week is actually pretty light. If you've been keeping up with our schedule, then you read most of chapter 10 last week, so all you should have left there is one section on theories of observational learning and another one on applications of observational learning. My video lectures for this week are going to focus mostly on theoretical stuff, because I feel like that's probably what needs the most explanation. And the theoretical issue that I want to focus on in this video lecture is basically whether imitation is an innate tendency or a learned one. So are we born imitators? In other words, is imitation an innate inborn capacity that we have? Or is it something that we learn to do? Is it something that we acquire through experience? So that's the question here. It's a nature versus nurture kind of question. And guys, the idea that imitation is innate is actually a pretty old one in psychology. So for example, it's a view that was endorsed by William James, who once referred to imitation as an instinct in the fullest sense. And there is some evidence to back up that idea. So, for example, in one fairly well-known study, a couple of researchers named Andrew Maltzoff and Keith Moore published these photographs of infants who were just a few weeks old. And as you can see, they appear to be imitating the facial gestures that they saw an adult model make. Now, in that study, the gestures that were modeled for the infants included puckering up the lips, which they called lip protrusion, opening the mouth, mouth opening, and sticking out the tongue, tongue protrusion. So the adult would model one of these facial gestures for the infant. The infant's reaction would be videotaped. And then those videos would be shown to judges who were, as we say, blind. Meaning, of course, that the judges didn't know which gesture had been modeled by the adult for the infant. The judges were blind to that. So that's how the study was conducted. And the results are illustrated in these graphs. So as you can see, the infants were much more likely to perform the gesture that they had seen the model make than they were to perform any of the others. So if the modeled behavior was lip protrusion, then the judges tended to score the infant's response as lip protrusion, even though, again, they didn't know that that was what the infant had seen being modeled. When the infant saw mouth opening being modeled, they tended to respond with mouth opening of their own. And the same thing went for tongue protrusion. Now, again, these infants were very young. They were just 12 to 21 days old. And so it's unlikely that they would have learned to imitate these behaviors. In fact, Meltzoff and Moore actually interviewed the parents of these infants, and they all said that they had never seen imitative behavior before in their babies. And so, of course, that suggests that this tendency to reproduce the model's behavior resulted not from prior reinforcement, of imitative behavior, but rather from something innate, something the babies were born with. And even stronger evidence in favor of that idea came from another study that Meltzoff and Moore published a few years later, where they got similar results with a sample in newborns who were all less than three days old. In fact, one of the infants they studied was only 42 minutes old. So even at very young ages, we already seem to be equipped with this tendency to reproduce at least some of the behaviors that we see being modeled for us. However, other researchers have argued that while results like these are evidence of contagious behavior in infants, and therefore they're also evidence of imitation in infants, that doesn't mean that those babies are learning from this imitation. It doesn't mean they're acquiring any new behaviors. They could just be sort of reflexively reproducing these facial gestures that they already know how to make. And it doesn't mean that babies are born with a general tendency to imitate any behavior that they're capable of performing and that they see being modeled. So generalized imitation is not necessarily innate, in other words. These results don't imply that. This is evidence of imitation in infants, but it's not necessarily evidence of generalized imitation. So. I want to tell you about some other research now, which has cast some doubt on the idea that kids are born with a capacity for generalized imitation. So the way these two studies worked was they took one to two year old kids and they first taught those kids to reproduce a series of behaviors that they saw being modeled. 
Now, if they imitated a behavior successfully, then they'd be praised and they'd be given stickers or toys. So they got reinforced for imitating these baseline behaviors. And if they didn't imitate a behavior, then the researchers would use prompts and shaping until they did imitate it. So the kids were sort of trained like that to imitate the baseline behaviors. And then the kids would have new behaviors modeled for them. They'd have these target behaviors modeled for them. And of course, what the researchers wanted to know was whether the kids would imitate those new target behaviors. And the results were that they tended not to. So for example, take a look at these graphs, which are illustrating the results that the researchers got when they tested two particular children, Reese and Cal. So during these tests, the kids would have some baseline behaviors modeled for them and some target behaviors. So the baseline behaviors are represented by the open circles and the target behaviors are represented by the closed circles. And as you can see, they did tend to perform these matching responses for the baseline behaviors. They did tend to imitate those baseline behaviors. And again, those were the ones that they had previously gotten reinforced for imitating, but they didn't tend to imitate the target behaviors. They didn't imitate those new behaviors that they had never been reinforced for imitating. Now, the researchers did make sure that the infants were physically capable of performing the target behaviors. Okay, They even trained the infants to perform those behaviors without actually modeling them for the infants. But even after that training, the kids still failed to imitate those new target behaviors when those behaviors were modeled. And so what the researchers concluded from these findings was that a general tendency to imitate does not emerge until later on in childhood. So in other words, generalized imitation, the tendency to imitate in general, the tendency to do as others do, even when it's a novel behavior that you've never gotten reinforced for performing, is a learned tendency that develops over time. It's not innate. That's the conclusion that these researchers drew. Now, to reconcile that conclusion with the findings of the Meltzoff and Moore research that I talked about earlier, remember, they did find evidence of imitation in newborns. These babies were imitating these facial gestures. But again, that doesn't mean those babies were capable of generalized imitation. It doesn't mean they would have imitated any behavior that they saw a model perform. Rather, the imitative behaviors that they performed are probably better explained as contagious behaviors that were elicited by the side of the same behavior in a model. So whereas some capacity to imitate may be inborn, as melts often more found, these more recent results suggest that the generalized tendency to imitate a model, this tendency that we call generalized imitation, is not innate. Rather, it's something that we seem to acquire through experience. Okay, well, as always, please let me know if you have any questions about this stuff. But speaking of generalized imitation, that is a concept that plays a very important role in the first theory of observational learning that I wanna cover with you. And that theory, which is called the operant learning model, is what I'll be focusing on in my next video lecture. That's gonna do it for this one though. So I hope you have a great day and I'll catch you next time. Take care.